These are the gardens of Adan. You know in English they say gardens of Eden? You've heard that before? One of the levels of Jannah is called Adan. One of the higher levels of Jannah. These are the levels of Adan that they're entering. They're entering into these amazing gardens. And what's happening? They look around and they don't see their family. Imagine a person is entering Jannah, you and I are entering Jannah, and they don't, or, or you know, let's say my wife is entering Jannah, my mother is entering Jannah, and she doesn't see me. Now there's only two possibilities. One possibility is that I am somewhere else in Jannah. <coughs> maybe I'm in a higher level of Jannah, maybe I'm in a lower level of Jannah. And you know the levels of Jannah are very far apart from each other. So it's not like you go up the elevator and you're there. It's, you know, like the, looking at the stars above. There's a huge gap from one level of Jannah to the next level of Jannah. And does it, there's no guarantee that all of our families is, is earned the same level of Jannah. Of course, the other horrible possibility is that a family member is in the worst possible place they can be. But this ayah tells us, imagine for a moment, that Allah enters us by His mercy, some of the members of our family get into Adam, a higher level of Jannah. And imagine some others are in some lower level of Jannah. They're in a lower level. Obviously, we can't meet them. Now, before I go further, you tell me. There are four kinds of people Allah talks about that He has favored. أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ النَّبِيِّينَ I'll tell you the first one, النَّبِيِّينَ Anybody know the other three? As-Siddiqeen, Shuhada, Salih, وَحَسُنَا أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا The Prophets, those who confirm the truth in the Prophets, the martyrs and the righteous. Four levels of people that basically earn Jannah. What is the lowest of these four levels? The righteous, as salihin Now listen to this. وَمَنْ صَلَحَ مِنْ آبَائِهِمْ And whoever was righteous from among their ancestors. <coughs> Salaha implies here the lowest level qualified to enter Jannah. This person made it to Adan. Their family member is at the lowest level. They're at least righteous, so they made it into, into Jannah. And Allah says, because of you, they get upgraded. They get upgraded, you could be with them. Now here's the thing, you, I like to compare this to dunya. You know in dunya, you go into a, you book, make a booking at a hotel, right? So you have a lot of family coming, you make a booking at a hotel, you get the executive suite on the top floor, the really big baller room, that they charge a lot of money for, and they only have like three rooms like that. You get one of those rooms. And the rest of your family has five, six rooms on one of those economy peasant class floors. Right? They have those. So you go to the concierge and say, I'd like to be with my family. What are they going to do? Put all of them in executive suites or put you down in the economy class? What are they going to do? They're going to put you down in the economy class. What does Allah do here? You're in the executive class Jannah, the premium package. They're in the economy package Jannah, what does Allah do? He upgrades them. وَمَنْ صَلَحَ مِنْ آبَائِهِمْ And then Allah says آبَائِهِمْ It's such a beautiful thing. It's this amazing reunion, not like the ones we have at Eid. The, the, the reunions we have at Eid get complicated. <laughs> not like those. These are actually happy occasions. Right? What happens here is, you, you know, for example, I was born, before I was born, my mother's dad, my grandfather had passed away, I never met him. I only heard stories about him from my mother. Right? There are people who tell me my great-grandfather was a muhaddir. Three, four generations ago, he was this or he was that. Or my great-great-great-grandfather fought the British in this war. And we have stories recorded in history and you know, we're from his legacy, etc, etc. You don't just get to meet your dad and your granddad. You get to meet your ancient ancestors. I mean, I come from Pakistan, and I know for a fact, probably somewhere up in my, uh, my ancestry, my ancient ancestors were Hindu. Right? Islam came to them, they're not like born into Islam, they were Hindu. And there was some Hindu back in the day that became a Muslim. And because of that one guy's decision, his children's 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 children down to me are saying, La ilaha illallah. I'd like to meet that guy. My great great granddad. How was it? Who told you about Islam? You know? It'd be amazing. It would be an amazing thing to have that reunion. And their spouses. And by the way, when you meet your spouse in, in Jannah, it's not like meeting your spouse here. So don't get depressed. <laughs> right? So, right? 
Oh, you get to meet your wife? Uh, Jenna, I thought it was... Uh... <laughs> You're here too? No, not like that. <laughs> Am I in the right place? No, not like that. All, you know, all the ghil, all the ill feelings, all the, you know, all the things that you find, find anno annoying about your spouse. We, we love our spouses. But there are things that we don't get along with. There are things that are causes of friction. Allah gets rid of all of those things. The only thing love left is love and affection and appreciation. You know, that's all that's left. And then you meet your spouse and you're like, wow, why weren't we like this in dunya? Because it's dunya. You can't have that in dunya. You get that in dunya for the first week of marriage. That's it. After that, the flight lands and you're on planet Earth. Okay. وَذُرِّيَاتِهِمْ And their offspring. Imagine, right now, alhamdulillah, I have small children. And I don't know how long I'll be on this Earth. But I pray that they raise their kids to say, La ilaha illallah and live by it. And they raise their children, and they raise their children. And perhaps out of these children, someone will be some, you know, a great hero of Islam. Someone who carries the message of Islam. And he brings people closer to Allah's deen. Someone that the ummah is proud of from my children down the road. And I don't even know this happens 300, 400 years after I'm gone. And I get to meet my great, 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 great grandkids. That I could never have imagined. Wow. You're the, you're, you came from my daughter's daughter's son's daughter's daughter's daughter, all the way down. So you get to meet your ancestry all the way up, and you get to meet, meet your ancestry all the way down. In Jannah, there's this reunion happening. It's a lot of people, right? That's a lot of people to meet, to be excited about. So Allah says, وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يَدْخُلُونَ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ بَعْ And on top of this, there are angels. And Allah mentions in this surah specifically a, a certain group of angels. He calls them حَفَظَ مُعَقِّبَاتٌ These are angels that guard us. When harm comes our way, Allah has assigned each of us angels that ward off those harm, as, except for those who don't do their dues with Allah, they don't take care of their responsibilities with Allah. It's like you have these invisible security guards around you, harm is coming your way, and Allah says to the angels, move over, let the harm come to them. Move over, they don't deserve your protection. So they're, they're protecting us by the command of Allah, and they watch us by the command of Allah. When Allah commands, they, they walk off the job, because we don't deserve their protection anymore. You get to meet those angels. You were, oh, you're the guy at the car accident, you were there? Oh, thanks, bro. Do my job. You get to talk to angels. And they're coming at them from min kulli babin, from all doors. You got people coming from every direction. There's this huge party happening in Jannah. And so I conclude, Salamun alaykum bima sabatum. Allah is saying now, peace be unto you. Salam, salamun alaykum. May peace be unto you because of how patient you were. Because of how patient you were when? Now. Now. This is the advice of Allah. If this, if this passage teaches us, teaches us anything about the qualities of those who get to Jannah, it's sabr. Patience. Start being patient with your wife. Start being patient with your parents. Start being patient with your friends. Start being patient with your community, with your masjid, with your imam, with people that are praying next to you that are really annoying with children that are running around and making noise. There are some people who didn't hear a word I said because they heard a child say, eh. <laughs> That's it. Uh, this entire 40 minutes, all they were thinking was, whose child is that? <laughs> and they're just following, where'd he go? I need to see where he, you know. <laughs> That's all that's going on in their head. There's no patience. Become, be, if we can exercise our patience, the rewards are tremendous. The thing Allah is offering us is beautiful. This is, these are the kinds of counsel and advice and reminder that Allah offers us time and time again in the Qur'an. It's so beautiful. Well, who's going to make the time to go to the Qur'an and, come in, and listen and take in the advice, the counsel, the reminder, the beautiful words Allah is offering to you and me personally. This is personally for us.